Hello and welcome. In this educational aid, we're going to talk about Newton's three laws of motion and how they affect orbits. Let's start by introducing Newton and his laws. Newton developed his theory of gravitation when he was 23 years old, while he was home from college to avoid the plague affecting London at the time. Subsequently, 20 years later, he published his laws of motion in 1687. His theories and laws were based off his observations in studying the effects of gravity on the falling apple and watching stars and the planets in the night sky and wondering why they did not fall. Newton's first law states that a body at rest remains at rest or in constant motion unless acted upon by an external force. This law is often referred to as the law of inertia. To better explain this first law, let's look at a golf ball on the green. The golf ball is at rest and will continue to be so until an outside force is applied. In this example, the outside force is the putter. Now the ball, after being hit by the putter, will continue in constant motion unless acted upon by an external force. In this case, friction from the ground is the external force. This external force will eventually bring the ball to a stop. The ball will remain at rest until acted upon by an external force. And depending upon how good or bad your short game is, this process will repeat. Newton's second law states that the time rate of change of object momentum is equal to the applied force. The key component of this law is momentum. Momentum is simply the resistance an object has to change its speed or direction of motion. So to change an object's speed or direction of motion, a force must be applied. This law allows us to determine the force required to overcome the object's resistance to change. We can simplify the mathematical representation of this law by making certain assumptions, such as our mass is constant or does not change. Doing so, the law is written as F equals MA, or force is equal to mass times acceleration. This can be seen visually as well. Again, the golf ball on the green. The ball is at rest. A force must be applied to move the ball. Because the mass of the ball and the putter is constant, we can use the equation F equals MA to calculate the force required to overcome the desire of the ball to stay at rest. Newton's third law states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. What this law is stating, that in every interaction, there is a pair of forces acting on the two interacting objects. The size of the force on the first object equals the size of the force on the second object. The direction of the force on the first object is opposite to the direction of the force on the second object. Forces always come in pairs, equal and opposite, Action-reaction-force pairs. We can visually see this law in work with two skaters, each with different masses. When the skaters push off from each other, the skaters will accelerate from each other. Each will have different magnitudes of acceleration, but the force is equal and opposite. So we now know what Newton's three laws are, but what does that mean for space, and specifically, how do these laws affect orbits? Let's start by assuming we have a satellite, which is zooming through space without being affected by any celestial bodies or solar pressure. This is impossible, but let's just go with it. This is Newton's first law. This satellite will continue in constant motion unless acted upon by an external force. Now we can bring our example back to reality by applying Newton's second law. Let's put our satellite in a circular orbit around the Earth. A satellite in circular orbit is not in constant motion. Though its speed is constant, the direction of its velocity is constantly changing over the course of the orbit. So it must be under the influence of an external force. That external force that keeps a satellite in orbit is, of course, gravity. Gravity acts on the satellite in orbit, constantly affecting its momentum and forcing the satellite to continue its orbit around the Earth. As long as the mass of the satellite isn't changing, we're able to use this simplified form of Newton's second law, F equals ma. But F equals ma works only when the mass is constant. 
As soon as the satellite starts firing its thrusters or rocket motors, its mass is no longer constant. So Newton's third law provides us a way to understand and quantify rocket propulsion. A thruster propels mass in one direction, and the equal and opposite force causes the vehicle to accelerate in the opposite direction. To change our orbit size, the satellite will fire a thruster. The firing of the thruster propels mass out in one direction, forcing the satellite to move in the opposite direction. Well, that is it on Newton's three laws of planetary motion. I am Jeremy Brown with the National Security Space Institute. I hope you enjoyed this educational aid.